Hello, my name is Mike Ward. I'm the head of content at Script, Pink Sheet, and In Vivo. And we're here at Bio Europe at, in Copenhagen, uh, Bio Europe 2018. At uh, Informal, we have just uh, released a survey that we conducted uh, with support and, and sponsorship of uh, Rentschler and uh, LucaCare, where we were looking at sort of the drug formulations issues and you know, specifically sort of seeing what the challenges are. I'm joined by uh, Michael Scholl, who's the CEO of LucaCare, and Frederick Polana, who's a Senior uh, Vice President of Business Development at, uh, at, at Rentschler. So, so, gentlemen, thanks very much. So the survey, um, <clears throat> we conducted it with 150 people, um, sort of, you know, qualified uh, respondents. Uh, there were some sort of, you know, interesting findings. So for you guys, you know, who you know, supported and sponsored the, the survey, what were, what, were the, what were the sort of the key messages from, from the survey? Well, in general, I think uh, both parties were, were interested to, to learn more about what the industry is expecting, what the current status is, and, and where we can see and identify room for improvements. And um, I think what we have learned from this survey is basically that, that formulation doesn't play the role that it should play in the drug product development phase. Everybody's focusing on, on drug substance. And in general, uh, that means that many opportunities are missed in the industry. And, and we think that uh, the industry is starting to realizing that and will probably, and this is what the survey actually comes up with, change by focusing more on the opportunities that can be provided by, by advanced formulation developments early in the development phase. Right. And you know, so time to market, this has become uh, the umbrella. And time to market means, of course, limited budgets and limited timelines. But under this umbrella also the formulation development in early phases is so often underestimated and you are losing opportunities because later on, very often, later is too late. Yes. So, I mean, one of the things that came out of the survey was actually the, um, the number of programs that were killed because there was an issue with formulation or there was a significant delay. When we sort of saw those, those numbers, I think it was like 10% of actually programs got killed because of formulation and it was more than 50%, I think, um, were delayed by more than 12 months. In your experience, was, was, was that a surprise? I think for us it was not a surprise um, uh, on, on the one hand side, but it was a confirmation of what we see in our daily life and what we anticipate. And from that point of view, it was so interesting that uh, the, uh, the response was uh, exactly uh, focusing on this, this point. What was surprising maybe in this context is that the survey came up with a couple of messages that were contradictory. The, on the one hand, um, people are not really giving formulation a very uh, huge importance in the development process in general. On the other hand, 60% of our respondents already experienced substantial problems caused by missed formulation uh, uh, opportunities. And, and this doesn't correspond. But I think, as I said, the industry is just about to, to change. So, um, and, and, and that change, uh, I, I'm sort of th you know, thinking about this sort of the disconnect between, you know, what, what people sort of, you know, uh, are experiencing and yet, and that the, the response to it is, is still uh, suboptimal, I guess it would, would, would be a, a way. You know, wh what is that? Is that, what, what, within a sort of a company or the sort of people, you know, some people, the clients you would work with, you know, what is the issue? Is it the wrong people making the decisions at the moment? But I think it's exactly the point, uh, especially in, in the time where the decision is taken how we uh, perform the formulation development itself. So especially business development, uh, marketing, people that are interested to add value to a product, they are not involved anymore in these early phases uh, for formulation. And there is the point where you miss opportunities. I think formulation currently is seen as, as a CMC objective to come up with a stable product, whatever that means. Um, since commercial is not involved in this process early enough, that leads to time uh, constraints and to missed opportunities on the competitive advantage side of each and every product. 
And as Federico just pointed out, commercial is not involved in the decision-making process and that causes issues in the late phase of the product development and, and mainly in the commercialization phase. Right. And you know, so when sort of, you're know, looking and sort of making these decisions around sort of formulation, you know, one clearly different job functions need to be brought in that aren't in at the moment. But also at the stage, how early should, because you know, most biotech companies, they think that they're going to take an asset to phase two and then they hope to license it out to somebody else. Should biotechs be thinking about this formulation to help them in their value proposition for their assets? I think most definitely. Um, it, it's definitely harder to license out a drug substance than a full drug product. Big Pharma, who are the, the potential licensees, um, they are looking for products with a clear and, and uh, sharp TPP. They are looking for manufacturability, processability. They want to have a fully fledged CMC package, not only the drug substance. And it makes uh, much easier for, for biotech companies to license out a drug product than a pure drug substance that was in clinic with maybe a liquid frozen formulation and obviously has to be improved on the, on the drug product side. So, I mean, so do you have any examples of where a company has gone down a route and then sort of realized that, uh, wow, we should have thought about it? And like the snakes and ladders, on the snake and they go back to square one? I mean, does that hop happen? As a matter of fact, we, we were discussing to a biotech company a couple of years, which I obviously won't disclose, but no. uh, uh, they came to the conclusion that they don't need a formulation because they are planning to license out. They just want to have a, a proof of concept in phase two. Um, so they went into the clinic with a liquid frozen formulation. Um, as a result, they were experiencing substantial problems during clinical trials because the handling, obviously, in a multicentric study uh, uh, setting wasn't, wasn't doable for the doctors, more or less. And at the end of this day, although the drug substance showed safety and efficacy, Big Pharma wasn't interested in a, in a pure drug substance. So they said, go back, do your CMC package, and then you come back to us. So basically, this biotech company lost two to three years. Right. And let's face it, at the end of the day, the patient gets the drug product, not yeah. the drug substance. Yeah. Yeah, so therefore, so you have to anticipate what will, will happen with the product later on. So in fact, you know, so, you know, companies or biotech companies should be sort of thinking, not that they've got a clinical candidate, but actually they have a future product and exactly. think about what the product looks like. Right. Okay. Right. Yeah, we, we, we complete the survey. There's, we know the discussion is going to sort of you know carry on. Was there you know, any other sort of your know, key findings that? But one finding was for me. So at the end of the day, there is also some light at the end of the tunnel. Mm -hmm. So there is. A, it looks like that there is a trend. That in future, people want to invest more and earlier in uh, in formulation, and that right. uh, that is promising. Yeah. And on the other side, also, uh, what is also here it has to be mentioned. It's not only during the drug substance, but also the process itself. You can also have additional uh, um, uh, advantages during the bioprocessing with an advanced formulation. Yeah, absolutely. One, one key finding in the survey, which, which is based on the, the responding uh, experts of the industry, was that investments in formulation development over the next five years will double. And that, that's a positive trend, I guess. Okay, so I mean, I think it's a pretty good uh, way to sort of you know, finish this. So there are challenges, but we do people are beginning to recognize those challenges, but actually we can also see there's some you know, potential solutions to this. Uh, people will be able to download the, the, the survey. And as I sort of said, you know, we're gonna carry on this, this conversation in the future, uh, including a webinar that we'll announce uh, at, a, at a later date. So, so Michael and Federico, thanks, thanks a lot. very much. Thanks, Michael. Thanks a lot. Cheers.